So I just recently review, uh, reviewed and, and uploaded my video on the WIM Amp versus the WIM Amp Pro. Mm -hmm. And the main difference is that the WIM Amp Pro has that PFFB, the post filter feedback. And I don't know what that what does that do. A lot of times with certain class D apps, it will have like a it'll change the frequency response depending on the speaker that you, you connect it to, especially in the high frequencies. So have you ever heard like audiophiles say, Oh yeah, you know, I don't like class D because it sounds harsh or something like that, or the treble sounds a certain way. Mm -hmm. You've heard people say that, right? And a lot of times, like, ah, stupid audio files, right? <laughs> Silly <laughs> audio files. Tricks are Silly for kids. Guy. But you know what? They're right. They're absolutely right. And it's measurable. They are absolutely right that some class D, especially like the older implementations, a mm -hmm. lot of the high end stuff doesn't have this issue, right? Right. If you have some nice high pec stuff, like they they figured this out a long time ago, right? But on some of the stuff like the WIM app, they're less expensive, you know, more budget stuff. Um, they did have some of these issues. And so here is a measurement. I have the Arendel in green, right? Arendel 1723 Bookshelf S connected to the OG WIM app, right? Then I have the same speaker connected to the WIM app Pro. And when I'm zoomed out, this is typically how I look at frequency frequency response in this scale here like a 50 db scale and you can tell like uh okay the green one has a little bit more trouble right here like a little bit yeah that's, that's 2 db right that's not small but if you start zooming in it starts to look crazy like oh man <laughs> Dang, that's a lot you right but I it's think, only really that, that goes to show you like six, right like the the scale of which you're looking at the graph really can be interpreted like things can be interpreted the wrong way if you're not yeah. using like the proper scaling on these things. Yeah, That's a lot of the things that always messes me up. Are like this, like, oh man, my my frequency response is perfect. I'm like, can you zoom in a little bit? Okay, so uh, yeah, this is PFFB is the one in purple. Now keep in mind, I'm very zoomed in, right? Very zoomed in. So just to show off the little issues, uh, the thing I found interesting is I was measuring some like small, like little tiny narrow dips in the one with PFFB, and the other one did not have those, those dips. Now, again, if I zoom out the way I normally look at the thing, mm -hmm. right, there's that. And also, I'm wondering, like, if I smooth it using psychoacoustic smoothing, if that will even show up. So we hear like this, psychoacoustic smoothing. Let me see. Oh, yeah. So we would probably not really hear that too much, right? Because it's too narrow, right? It's very small area. Versus here, this is a this is a large area, right? So psychoacoustic smoothing. How would we hear it? It'd be more like that. So those are kind of like small things that you see in a measurement that I would rather not have, but they're there. Mm -hmm. So that is the that's the sound of the Arendel connected to the OG WIM amp. And the question really was, can I hear the difference? So I set I set up on an A B tester where I could just switch back and forth, right? And so I'd close my eyes, switch back and forth. So it's kind of like I don't know which one it's on currently. And then I'd try to figure out, all right, when is when when am I on the one on the WIM app original WIM app versus the pro, right? Because the WIM app original one has a treble boost. And it's super easy. Like I could get it every single time. Like I would if you gave me like a hundred bucks or every time I got it right, I'd be and have some money. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy because it's only one and a half, you know, 1.6 dB or whatever it is, but over a pretty wide range, mm -hmm. you can hear the pink noise go like shh, 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 shh. So, uh, and with music too. So that's what's also interesting is with music, I could also hear a difference, certain tracks, especially. Yeah. So yeah, PFFB, definitely worth something. Uh, the other thing that is kind of crazy, though, is um, here's the Sound Artist LS35A. So this is a different speaker, and it had less of an effect. This is a 11-ohm uh, speaker. So the effect was more here in the in this yeah. base. 
right? But the one with PFFB also kind of had an issue there. It wasn't perfect either, right? Ideally, you'd want this to be perfectly flat. So um, let's see here. Let me zoom out one more time. And the other thing I found out was that you can actually EQ out the issues with the one that doesn't have PFFB. So this is, again, in green, the OG WIM amp. In purple, the new one. And then this is the filter that I applied. So Magic Beans automatically figured out, okay, it should do this type of filter. And the end result was the red. So actually, if we're talking about a straight line, the EQ'd one is more on that straight line than the even the one with PFFB. So just to let people know, if you don't have the latest and greatest and you don't have something with PFFB, you should probably use Q to fix some of those issues. So 